What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's going on with Neo, Tesla, Spy, and Video, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's happening with the economic calendar thus far, how things are looking, in my opinion, and what you should be watching for as time progresses. But before I break into all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks. The offer ends very soon. Neo has been on a bit of a downtrend. We have this falling wedge like pattern, but going into the week, we have a couple of things coming out. So I want to be very quick in this video. For Monday, we just have some bill auctions coming out. We also have Bostic giving a speech. For Tuesday, we have very minor data. We just have some manufacturing numbers coming out, but that's all very minor. Wednesday doesn't really have much data except for one Fed speaker. Then for Thursday, we have the piece, uh, core PCE expectations and some GDP numbers and jobs numbers. So lots of GDP numbers and Michigan consumer sentiment data comes out for Thursday. It's going to be a data-heavy day. And then Friday is when we have PCE and Jerome Powell giving a speech. So I think that for the week, in summary, we have some data coming out for Monday and Tuesday, but nothing too insane. Wednesday is going to be a so-so day with very, very minor pieces of data too. And then Thursday and Friday are going to be data-heavy days, which is going to cause a big volatility in the markets. Uh, we had a very, very interesting options chain, just under 500,000 calls expiring, over 1.2 million of the puts expiring, leading to a very, very uh, strange price action on spot loss of choppy price action as market makers were trying to hurt the options holders. And we also had the fear and greed index currently at greed. Uh, we came down just a little bit, so we're going to see if this kind of adjusts or not, depending on what the market does. Uh, the VIX is also in a very, very interesting position. It's still kind of flat right now. Hasn't got a big bounce yet, so we'll have to see if we get a follow-through move next week. This is what earnings are looking like for the week ahead of us as well. Uh, we have a couple of others like Westport, uh, we have GameStop, Rumble, and others like that. Everything is so minor to the point where I'm not going to really be talking too much about this. I don't even think I'm going to cover many of these for the week. First, I, but I just wanted to give you guys a really, really nice uh, a nice summary and a nice kind of like projection of how this could look like. So you could take a screenshot of this if you guys are interested. Otherwise, this is what earnings look like. And for news involving NEO, NEO's power unit signs a deal with Anhui uh, Zonghan. I, I may have said that wrong, but they're basically going to help advance the swap station build out. And that's actually some great news. So this partnership is actually going to be very, very important, uh, creating a very nice open energy network and battery asset management and operating system for them. So great news for them. I really think that this is great for their improvements. And despite you know, deals like this being signed, NEO is just continuing to fall as shorts are continuing to attack it. Now, one thing about NEO is that the stock is very, very oversold. It's been dropping way too hard, way too fast. And we have a falling wedge that's forming, which does actually typically lead to bullish breakouts. But we don't really have a breakout yet. So I need to see NEO try to get back above $5. If we start to break past this and start, to, <coughs> excuse me, we start pushing, we could be looking for a nice move back up. We're not ready yet. It's been a while since we got any sort of bounce, and we have to give the stock the time it needs. So I do think that there could be a retest of 4.8. We'll have to see if it bases here or not. If it fails all the way down 4.8, we could be looking at new territory all the way down to about 4.5. It's a little bit unfortunate, but this is what it is, guys. We just want to be as open-minded as possible. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA is looking kind of bullish. It's currently at... 941 if this thing tries to break past that resistance our next target is going to be all the way up to the uh, all-time high essentially we could be starting to push all the way up to these higher levels this looks like a very very nice accumulation structure that developed on the chart and now it's trying to see you see we had this accumulation now we're trying to push right back up so i, I am eyeing a move to about 950 that could be coming so the chart looks very very strong tesla is looking like it's trying to rebound a bit but we have this resistance very close to our 20 ema uh, we're going to be watching Tesla at 171 to 172. If we do try to break past this, we could be looking for a rebound on Tesla back towards this gap fill, and we could be looking for a move to about 172 next week. And then we'll have to see what happens after that, but I could see some potential upside coming. For SPY, we have a downtrend on this channel, but we're going to be watching to see how well we maintain this. So if we lose the yellow line down here and we start sinking, watch 520 support. If we lose that, I think it's going to come all the way down to 518. If we hold 520 and we continue to maintain this channel, there could be a bull flag for me, but we have to break the white line to turn bullish and start pushing back up. 
as of right now, I'm open-minded to anything. There is a bull flag for me that does suggest we could get a big bounce and a breakout, but we need some kind of a catalyst. And as of right now, SPY is just on a slight downtrend. It's been downtrending for the last day and a half, so we'll have to see. So I do see a test of 520 coming. We're going to be watching if we get a big bounce and a breakout, or if we end up failing and collapsing. So I'll be watching for that very carefully for the week. Same thing with the QQQ. I mean, if you look at the QQQ, it's just range bound right now. If we do try to push higher, break above 446 point, we're going to be looking for a push all the way up to about 448. If we end up sinking down, watch 444. If we lose that, we can start sinking. So watch for that as well. So that is it for uh, the main ones I typically talk about, except for Apple. Let me just cover Apple. I forgot about Apple, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, for Apple, it has a double bottom like structure, but it's kind of trying to struggle at 172.5 to really get a break. So it could be looking for a move back down to 170.9, just then just more sideways price action. If it establishes a higher low, so if it comes to like 170 one or so and we start pushing back up again that's going to be our sign but i do see a little decline coming on apple for it tries to bounce so watch for that as well but with that being said guys that's your overview of the market just real quick not a whole ton is coming out for next week until like the later days and with that being said i just want to thank you all so much for listening i'll see you guys again on sunday take care and just know that neo is on a bit of a downtrend there's a risk of this thing dropping even lower back down towards 4.8 or even below that but we do have a falling wedge. There's no sign of this breaking out and turning bullish yet. It's still on a downtrend, so you just have to wait and see. But like I said before, guys, I just I just want to thank you all so much for listening. Excuse me. Have a great day and peace out.